This is the sixth and final section of chapter two quadratics and this section is all about modeling with quadratics. So you will come, off, come across modeling uh, quite a few times in um, maths in year 12, year 13. And basically modeling requires us to apply all the skills we have learned about a topic. So in this topic with quadratics, what have we learned? Well, we've learned about solving quadratics and we can solve them by factorizing, by using a quadratic equation, or by completing the square. We also looked at how we use functions with quadratics. Also, we looked at sketching quadratics. And when we sketch a quadratic, we want to know uh, where the roots are, if there are any, where the graph crosses the y-axis, the y-intercept, and where its maximum or minimum uh, point is on a quadratic and the last thing that we looked at was a discriminant and using the discriminant to work out how many roots we have if, it, if it's positive two real roots if it's equal to zero two repeated roots basically one root and if it's less than zero no real roots so we'll be using these skills when we're modeling with quadratics example 15 a spear is thrown over level ground from the top of a tower the height in metres of the spear above the ground after t seconds is modelled by the function h of t equals 12.25 plus 14.7 t minus 4.9 t squared, where t is greater than or equal to zero. OK, so this is my diagram of what's going on. Here's the tower. Somebody stand at the top of the tower. They, they throw a spear. I imagine the, the path of this spear. Uh, spear is going to look something like this. It's going to gradually go down and hit the ground at some point. My first question would be, why is somebody throwing a spear from the top of a tower? Very strange behaviour. Anyway, that's what we, we don't need to answer why they're throwing a spear. We just need to answer some questions about this model. So first of all, in part A, we need to interpret the meaning of the constant term 12.25 in the model. So that's this number here. 12.25. So when am I just going to get 12.25? Well, that's going to be when t is zero. When t is zero, all of these two terms here are going to disappear. So I'll just blank them out. So we're going to pretend they're, di they're disappearing. And we're just left with h of t equals 12.25. So let me write that down first. So when t is zero, that means that h of t is 12.25. Now the question does say interpret. Now interpret is not just writing down a set of numbers like I've done here. It's looking at the context of the question. So what do we know about when t is zero? Well, that is when the spear is thrown. Yeah. So we want to talk about when the spear is thrown and 12.25 is going to be h of t is the height, that's 12.25 meters. So basically we can say this, this is gonna be our interpretation. This is what we want to write as an answer or something similar. So the spear is thrown from a height of 12.25 meters there we go there's our full interpretation that's why we want to answer it why they're throwing the spear from the top of a tower who knows nobody knows very strange behavior as i said but that's the height they're throwing it from and so any any question that says interpret then you're going to write some sort of sentence down look at the context of the question and comment using the words that they use in the question. So I'll just highlight the word interpret. OK, so let's have a look at part B. And part B is asking us, it says, how, after how many seconds does the spear hit the ground? Well, the spear is going to hit the ground. And hopefully not a person. There's no one there. Maybe it's some sort of Olympic training or something. Maybe that's what Olympians do. They throw spears from the top of towers. Who knows? So, um, so it's this the time. Sorry, I've written that wrong. 
I'm concentrating too much on why the person's throwing um, the, sphere, the spear. So um, the spear will hit the ground, hit the ground when its height is zero. And that's when h of t is equal to zero. That's the height. So what does that mean? That means that this quadratic that I've got here is equal to zero. Now I'm just going to swap the terms around so that I've got the minus 4.9 t squared first and then the 14.7 t, don't have to do this. And then the positive plus 12.25, 12.25 is next, and that's gonna to equal to zero. So I now need to solve this quadratic. Now we've got different choices to solve the quadratic. We could factorize, we can complete the square. So I'll just put that as CTS, complete the square. Or we can use the quadratic equation, quadratic equation. Or we could even use our calculator to solve this. There's nothing in the question that says we can't use our calculator. If you can't use your calculator, there'll be like a sentence at the start in bold that say, says something like uh, answers which rely wholly on um, calculated technology will not be acceptable. So this question doesn't say anything like that. So I'm going to use my calculator. And if you've got the FX991EX and you're using your calculator, you want to press menu first. Once we've pressed the menu button, we want to scroll down until we find uh, menu A or num letter A. That's for solving equations. Um, we then press 2 because we want to solve a polynomial. And we want to solve a polynomial with a degree of 2. That means the highest power is 2. You can go right up to a power of 4. So that's the key sequence to solve this on a calculator. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my calculator to solve this. So I'm in the menu now, polynomial, degree 2. And so I type in negative 4.9 equals 14.7 equals 12.25 equals, press equals again, and I get my first solution. And it's 3 plus root 19 over 2, 3 plus root 19 over 2. Now, I don't really want um, a third answer if it's a time. So if I press the SD button, I can see that I get 3.67944 and so on. Um, I probably want to give that to three significant figures. So that would be 3.68 seconds. Um, now, in terms of rounding, we normally want to go for three significant figures as a minimum, unless the question says otherwise, round to a minimum of three significant figures. So a minimum of three SF, unless you are told otherwise. That's what they expect you to do in A-level. So don't just do something random. Oh, I feel like uh, writing down everything on my display or I feel like uh, rounding to one decimal place. Always three significant figures unless the question says otherwise. So that's a, an answer. Let's press equals to get the next solution. And that is 3 minus root 19 over 2. If I press the SD, all right, I get a negative answer. I get negative 0 0.67944. Now the model says that t is greater than or equal to 0. So this solution here we're going to reject it's no good so we just stick with the first one that we've written down there's only one solution to this which makes sense it's only going to hit the ground once i guess it's not going to bounce up off the ground so 3.68 seconds given to three significant figures part c we're asked to write h of t in the form a minus uh, b and in brackets t minus c all squared where a, b, and c are constants to be found. Now, when we write something in this form, basically I've completed the square. It may look slightly different to how we're used to seeing it, because normally what we would see is this part first and then the number at the end. But I'm guessing because it's a negative, they've written the other way around, but it's completing the square. So let's write our quadratic down, minus 4.9 t squared 
plus 14.70 plus 12.25 and what I need to do is to factorize out the uh, negative 4.9 so I'll do that first so negative 4.9 and then divide everything by 4.9 so uh, or negative 4.9 so let's do 14.7 divided by negative 4.9 that's negative 3 so minus 3t and then we'll do 12.25 divided by negative 4.9 so we're factorizing that out minus 5 over 2 right so now this is in a format where we can complete the square so negative 4.9 and then in brackets we'll have t minus and then half of the 3 which is 3 over 2 keep it as a fraction 3 over 2 squared now what will this generate what number will it generate that we don't want negative th uh, or th 3 over 2 all squared negative 3 over 2 times negative 3 over square 2 squared i don't want negative 3 over 2 squared so I'll write it as negative 3 over 2 squared. I don't want that. I'll take that off. That's the same as 9 over 4. So you could have written 9 over 4. But I do want negative 5 over 2. So remember, take off what you don't want, which is this, and then put in what you do want, which is negative 5 over 2. So from here, what I can do is actually simplify what I've got in brackets. So that's going to be t minus 3 over 2, all squared, and then the negative 9 over 4 uh, minus 5 over 2 and that's negative 19 over 4 now it's not quite in the form that they want I actually need to expand the brackets to get it exactly in that form so that's going to be I'll do it over here negative 4.9 and then t minus 3 over 2 all squared and then I need to do negative 9 over 4 and times that by negative 4.9 and that gives 931 over 40 let's see what that looks like as a decimal oh that's not too bad 23.275 um, because it's a negative times a negative it's a positive so plus 23.275 now um, I can see that we've got a b and c so just for clarity i'll just write down what a b and c are so my value of a the number that's on its own is 23.275 my value of b that's the number in front of the brackets so it says negative b so i've got negative 4.9 so b is actually 4.9 and then c that is uh, the number in the bracket so that's 3 over 2 um, and I'll write that as um, now is that need to be negative or positive it's already got a negative there so negative 1.5 I could write 3 over 2 I'm just being consistent in that everything else is a decimal so I'll write that as a decimal so a 23.275 b 4.9 and c 1.5 and last part of this question using your answer to part c or otherwise find the maximum height of the spear above the ground and the time at which this maximum height is reached so this is using our completed the square form um, and working out what's going on now since he's talking about a maximum height i think that the path of my spear is actually going to be something like this going up and then coming down like this and we're trying to find out what this is here that's the max height so my I've updated my drawing um, to what I think actually it's going to look like we want to work out this otherwise the maximum height would just be 12.5 if it was going down but it somebody's throwing the spear up and then it comes back down so let's look back at when we completed the square so that's this bit here we've got this negative 4.9 so I'm multiplying a negative number by something and I want to work out the maximum 
the whole expression is, is going to be. So the maximum this whole expression is going to be is when I multiply negative 4.9 by the lowest number, the smallest, that I can make the total contents of this bracket. Or actually, I think using this second form of the completed the square may be more useful because it's a bit clearer to see what's going on. OK, so we're always going to have 23.275 there. We can't do anything with that. It's always going to be there. And then we've got negative 4.9 times by something and something squared. So we're going to be multiplying negative 4.9 by a positive number. So we're always going to get all of this part here. So let me just highlight just that part. So all of this part here whatever value of t we have is always going to end up being a negative number. So we'll always end up by taking something away from 23.275 unless we can make this part zero and then we won't be taking anything away. So if we can make this first part zero, then we're not going to be taking anything away from 23.275. So first of all, the maximum height with maximum value of h of t is 23.275 meters. That's the maximum value of that whole expression. Yeah, because I'm, I'm not never going to be adding anything to it. I'm only going to be taking away unless I make this whole part here zero. I won't be taking anything away and I'll take I won't be taking anything away if I can make the bracket zero and I can make the bracket zero when t is three over two. So that maximum height is going to occur when the time is 3 over 2 seconds or 1.5 seconds. So actually having the completed square form um, actually in this format, it's easy or easier to see what's going on in terms of what the whole expression gives you. A positive number taking away something. Can we avoid taking anything away? Yes, when we make t the value 3 over 2 or 1.5 seconds, so we've got a maximum height 23.275 meters and that occurs at one and a half seconds. So one and a half seconds after this person, this lunatic, has thrown a spear off of this tower, it's going to reach its maximum height. I guess it gives some time for the people that are on the ground to sort of take cover and run away from this falling spear. So you should now be able to do exercise 2H on pages 34 to 35. And then once you've done that, you can then go on to the mixed exercise.